Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to my home worm farming channel. If you are looking for an active worm farm community, you are in the right place. Today, I am going to be checking in on my European night crawlers and talk to you about the bugs that you might see in your worm bin. What are they? Are they harmful to your worms or to your garden? I'm going to break out the microscope and let you see them up close. Put in the comments below, what critters do you see in your worm bin? Last check-in was four weeks ago. I was starting to see that the possum that was in my basement may have been reducing the population. With the warm weather, um, the population should start rebounding rather quickly as cocoons hatch faster in higher temperatures. If you are interested in the books that I get my information from, I have them linked in the video description underneath the video. Those links also include many of the items that I use in my wormery if you're interested. There are some Amazon links there and I do get a little commission if you buy them from my links. All right, let's give this bin a quick turnover and get this you know, all turned in so that everything is homogenous and then we can take a talk about the bugs. You can tell with it being uh, 79 degrees Fahrenheit and 78% moisture, the top of my bin here actually starts to get a bit of mold on it. But that is okay. That just means that the fungi are active in this bin and that they are going to help break things down if I can get them the moisture that they need to help me out. So first things first, if I see mold or fungus or mushrooms in my bin, they're not really critters, but I do hear questions about that quite a bit, and they are fine in your bin. They're not gonna hurt your worms and they're not gonna hurt your garden. They are going to help break things down and make them uh, available for your worms. So everything's looking really good here. I don't see that everything is, is too moist down below. Everything looks like it's pretty even. So just gonna give it that quick flip to get the drier stuff on the bottom and the slightly wetter stuff on the top. Looks good. Every once in a while I find a little piece of plastic that uh, managed to get its way into the shredder and so then I usually pull it out. For some reason I actually think the worms will move things and uh, put them on top if they're not edible. Let me know in the comments below, have you noticed that, that your worms kind of push things up and out of the way if they don't like them? I have noticed that. It's, or it's just a coincidence that I always see you know, like weird little plastic bits that should not have went into the shredder um, on the top here. Okay. Now it's getting a little wetter as we're getting towards the middle of the bin. You can kind of hear how wet that is. Uh, with 78% uh, moisture in this bin, not too many things are going to be evaporating. This is a good moisture for the worms. This is not harming them at all. But unfortunately, one of the things that causes a bloom in the bin bugs is uh, high moisture. So I do have to keep an eye on that and get in here and make sure that the bin keeps oxygenated and doesn't give uh, those bin bugs that we all worry about a chance to proliferate. All right, looks like we're doing pretty good here in the middle. Just continuing to pull out the plastic. Not sure where it comes from. I know that some some of the paper that I use possibly could be laminated, but if it's between my worms having to pick it out and it going to the landfill, I'll let the worms clean it up and then uh, I can throw the rest in the landfill. But they are doing a great job. If this was drier, I could probably harvest some of this, but in its current state, this is definitely not harvestable. This is half the size of my worm bin blue, if you're not new here. Um, so I don't quite have all the room that I do in that one to spread things out and let them dry um, as easily. So I do have to pay attention to the moisture in here. All right, let's turn you around and we will look at the business end of the bin where I'm pretty sure we will find some bugs. Okay, so looking at all of the worm critters here, my bin is getting very, very wet and I have a lot of springtails and I would not be surprised I think that is actually a potworm 
right there. Now, springtails are so good that people actually buy them to put into their terrariums because they are so good at getting rid of mold and dead debris. Now, the potworms, although they show up when conditions are not ideal, basically um, they are a species of worm that their blood just doesn't have the same stuff in it to make them pink. And they're helpers. Nobody says that they're bad. But they are an indication that you probably have too much moisture. Looking in on this stem, I can see lots and lots of springtails on here. We're going to put this in the bucket so that we can look at that underneath the microscope. So what have we covered? Well, let's see. Let me try and find an isopod in here. Here he is. So isopods are something of a double-edged sword. In the worm bin, they are perfectly fine. They are not doing anything harmful for, to the worms, but I can tell you from personal experience, this spring I did have some isopods um, hurt some of my um, tomato seedlings that were very small when I planted them outside. So I usually, in order to control them in the garden, I will go ahead and either put diatomaceous earth or ground up eggshell right around the plant to prevent isopods from uh, chewing on the stems. Once the plants get bigger, they don't actually get, you know, they're not a problem anymore. It's just when they're very, very tiny. Okay, so we're getting into the food here. I'm going to have to go back and look and see what we fed last time. But I do see the springtails in here. I don't see enough of anything else that I can really tell. But uh, we will be able to see lots of cool things under the microscope. So another thing that I see every once in a while are millipedes and centipedes. And uh, you will probably need to Google which is which in your area because, again, there are thousands of different types. But the uh, centipedes... Um, are not nice. They will eat worms and worm cocoons, etc. But the millipedes, which I personally, when I see one, I associate them with those really flat, almost feathery looking critters that are in uh, dry areas. I'm not sure what, you know, you have in your area, but that's what I think of when I think of millipedes. And the millipedes are fine. They're shredders, just like the isopods. Um, and I've not read any place in any of the books that says that they are bad for the worms in any way. Well, it looks like the worm population is definitely bouncing back. I see lots of babies. The possum that uh, reduced the population of my worms is gone, and now it seems like I'm having a good old boom. Whoop, look at that. I just love how they just get all kinds of snuggly and uh, get inside of stems and hang out. So party in the, I think this is a, some sort of a cauliflower or something stem. No party in the avocado today, now we're partying in stems. So the moisture is really, really wet in here. So I am going to put in a lot of dry bedding, which will mitigate any problems that I'm heading towards as far as bugs go and it'll also make the bin a little bit easier to manage as far as harvesting in the future. Now I also was going to put in earwigs which I've got one in here but I don't know if I can catch it and uh dang it get over here yeah all right let me see nope I don't know where it went. But uh, earwigs can go either way. They are also potential predators. So I'm going to go ahead and if I can get it, I'm going to remove it. There it is. So I'm going to put that in so that we can look at it under the microscope. But from what I understand, they can actually be harmful to the worms. So if you see those, um, I would recommend that you remove them. I don't know how many they eat or anything if they're, but I've only ever seen one or two in my worm bins. I don't usually see a whole glut of them. So I do not ever, knock on wood, never have problems with ants in my worm bins. I don't have a lot of advice about that. Other than that, I hear that they are not good, um, that they will hurt the worms. Um, 
So that's one thing. If you have any other ideas of other bugs that you have or you've heard of that people see in worm bins, spiders, of course, hanging over the, uh, over the worm bins are good for catching gnats. And uh, we don't like gnats because they're annoying. I don't know that they actually hurt the worms, but they're annoying to us people. Okay, let's get them some bedding, some nice dry bedding in this case, so that we can get this bin moisture under control. All right, so I've got a bucket of the dry shredded paper right here. This is not my prepared bedding, so this is just cardboard and paper. And I'm gonna want to try and incorporate that in with some of my super wet uh, media that's already in here, just so that it does not get any worse. Normally when I feed this bin, I will just feed one end but this is getting close to the point where it is, you know, dangerously too wet. And we don't want that, so I'm going to incorporate this dry paper in. And this is what I recommend you do. If you don't have shredded paper, I would recommend adding really, really dry food. Or maybe uh, dry peat moss or coconut coir into the bin to try and dry it out for you. And that, you know, you can put fans on it on stuff, but this is the best, it'll absorb the moisture. And over time, this will even out. It won't be so dry. The worms will be fine. Okay, I wanna make sure that I've got something to sop all that up before I give them any food. I always say, try and solve your problems first, don't you know, feed and then have to worry about it. So now that we've got some of that dry paper in there, which can be used as food, now I'm going to dig out a pit here and give them their feeding. A Little more dry paper in the bottom, and then they're going to get basically my canning scraps and kitchen scraps. So they'll have some of this melon and tomatoes and onions and peppers and some bread. And then I'm going to give them a little bit more dry paper on top. And when I move the camera, I will incorporate that over the course of the entire bin. Uh, let me get you a little bit better perspective. Okay, so here we are at the finished bin. I've got the dry paper right here. I'm just gonna leave the finished part over there uncovered. And hopefully this will slowly wick the moisture out from this bin because it is way too wet. And generally way too wet also equates with our topic of the day, which means bin critters that are not worms. Generally, the higher the moisture, the more you end up with the bin critters. Okay, well, if you liked this video, go ahead and give that a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.